Every tower in Bloons is good at something, and I'm going to show you how to best use them all today. Starting with the Dart Monkey, the top path really focuses on Pierce and Ceramic Popping Power, which makes it a staple of race events. But its real calling card is the ability to bounce its balls off obstacles, and with a tier 5 upgrade, re-hit Bloons multiple times, causing for some crazy damage. So, to get the most out of them, use the Ultra Juggernaut on obstacle-heavy maps like Moon Landing and Cornfield. The middle path is interesting as it does have a long ability cooldown, but when activated, the Plasma Monkey Fan Club is great at just about everything, as it excels at single target damage, grouped balloon damage, and can cover the entire screen for those pesky multi-track maps. Plus, the Super Monkey Fan Club makes for an excellent stepping stone to help you save up for the PMFC. Just make sure to stall every round to get that ability off cooldown and you'll be good to go. And the bottom path Dart Monkey is a fan favorite with crossbow wielding Dart Monkeys, but all of these upgrades are best used when shooting down a straight path to utilize their full pierce. And the Crossbow Master is at its strongest during the mid game as it can handle just about everything before Super Ceramics which starts showing up on round 81. Moving on to the Boomerang Monkey, the top path is amazing at crowd control. Starting at the tier 3, the Glaives will bounce from Bloon to Bloon, absolutely decimating dense swarms, making it great for around 63 and 78. And if you upgrade it to a Glaive Lord, just make sure that he's placed on a curve and you'll handle just about any amount of normal balloons and do some good damage to blimps too. Moving on to the middle path, this boomerang is a jack of all trades, master of none type of tower. Tiers 3 through 5 do good damage to mobs and balloons alike, with the lower tiers being great stepping stones all the way to the permacharge, which is capable of destroying just about everything from DDTs to dense packs of BFBs. But to get the most out of this guy, try to fully use the boomerang's arc, because if you can pull that off, you're in for an easy game. And the bottom path boomer is unlike the other two paths in that it prefers straight lines and its boomerangs can re-hit balloons, causing it to deal a good amount of damage. But the clear strength of this tier 4 and 5 boomer is that when it attacks mob quest balloons, it'll push them back and deal a bunch of damage. Next up, we have the Bomb Shooter, and the strength of the top path is its incredible stunning potential. Bloon Impact does a great job stunning Super Ceramics, and if you can afford the Bloon Crush, it'll bring everything to a halt other than bads and bosses. As for the middle path, its strength is how much damage they do to Mob Quest Balloons. The Mob Mauler is a super cheap option that can be spammed, while the Mob Assassin and Eliminator's abilities do crazy single target damage when activated. So, if mobs are your problem, here is the solution. And the bottom path is very similar to the Glaive Ricochet in that it excels against large packs of balloons. Cluster Bombs is a great early game option, recursive clusters destroy rounds like 63 and 78, and Bomb Blitz can wipe out the entire screen with its passive ability. One quick tip is that you can easily trigger this passive ability with Azili's Totem as it does cause you to lose some lives. Moving on to the Tack Shooter, the top path's Ring of Fire is great at popping group balloons prior to Super Ceramics. Then upgrading this guy to an Inferno Ring makes it great at just about everything as its Meteor chips down the health of stronger balloons while its main attack will handle anything below ZOMGs. Just buff this guy with the primary training or expertise and watch that extra Pierce Meteor go ham. As for the middle path, Pierce is the name of the game. The Blade Shooter tears apart the early rounds, making it especially effective in battles too. Then, the Blade Maelstrom's ability is capable of wiping out huge packs of balloons for a low price, which really shines in race modes. And the Super Maelstrom takes this to another level, as it will rid your screen of balloons. And if you need even more damage, pair these abilities with a Pat Fusty Roar, and the balloons are in for a bad time. And on to the most popular path of the Tack Shooter, the bottom path is all about projectiles. Starting with the Tack Sprayer, it is good early game, especially for some cheap mob damage, but more importantly, it builds into the Overdrive. The XX4 Tack Shooter is crazy cheap for how much damage it does, but its real strength is how well it pairs with primary training and stronger stimulant. Its low price and high projectile count makes it a great partner for these buffing towers, and upgrading it to a tack zone is where things get ridiculous, with its main strength being how fast it takes out mob quest balloons, as all 32 of its tacks can hit the same target. Next up is the Ice Monkey, with the top path focusing on helping out other towers. Ice Shards is great for race events or hyper-dense rounds of balloons in the mid-game, as those shards can be a super shrapnel if used correctly. Then, Imbrittle and Super Brittle are made for making mob class balloons take more damage, which is especially useful in boss events. Just combine them with high projectile towers like the Tag Zone and watch the damage stack up. For the middle path, the Ice Monkey is mainly used for letting towers be placed on water, but the huge slow aura of the Absolute Zero plus its ability to freeze mob class balloons makes it a great addition for the later rounds, especially against DDTs. And for the bottom path, the Cryo Cannon will completely stop normal and super ceramics in their tracks, allowing your main DPS towers to use more of their pierce because of this forced clumping. Icicles is a cheap option to help control balloon rushes by dealing fair damage while freezing the balloons, and Icicle Impale holds a unique place as a tower that brings mob class balloons to a halt and can even solo DDTs. Now on to everyone's favorite tower, the Glue Gunner. The top path focuses on dealing damage over time to multiple balloons. The Balloon Dissolver strength is that it combines decent damage with a slow, which allows it to easily take out lower level balloons, plus this corrosive effect outpaces regrows, making it a reliable regen rainbow killer. 
Upgrading this guy makes his damage over time do more and more damage, which makes the Bloon Solver a beast at clearing super ceramics, especially for how cheap it is. Then the middle path focuses on gluing everything with its strength being constant slows. The glue hose will handle most of the bloons, but upgrading it to a glue strike or glue storm gives it an ability that amplifies the damage of every other monkey on screen. This is especially useful in the 90s or in boss events as this global debuff to bloons is pretty crazy. And finally, we have the most popular path of the glue gunner, which excels at slowing down mob class balloons. Mob glue is a must have with its DDT slows and has become a staple of chimps runs, especially on round 95. Upgrading it to a relentless glue makes it a great crowd controller as the glue blobs can spread very quickly, but the cream of the crop is super glue. This will bring all mob class balloons to a halt, making them very easy to deal with. Next, we have the sniper with the top path focusing on single target damage. Now, obviously every sniper's strength is their unlimited range, but more specifically, the deadly precision sniper is a great mid game option for dealing with ceramics and chunking down mobs. Then it upgrades to a main mob, which is one of the best towers in the game as it repeatedly stuns mob class balloons and deals decent damage for a low price. And the tier 5 cripple mob specializes at crippling single target blimps, especially ZMGs, bads, and bosses, as it makes them take more damage from every other attack. Now, the middle path completely changes this, as Bouncing Bullet takes the sniper from a single target tower to being great at grouped balloon damage. The supply drop in Elite Sniper upgrades increase its DPS, making it a great mid game carry and super ceramic cleanup, but they can also make for some good farmers outside of Chimps games. Getting an elite sniper on Impopable can be a great source of alternate farming while also bolstering your defenses. And the bottom path changes again in that its main strength is its crazy attack speed. Each upgrade makes it attack faster and faster, causing for some nutty single target damage if cross paths with larger caliber, or some decent grouped damage if cross paths with shrapnel. And if you get all the way to an elite defender, you can use the Zilli's totem to 4x its attack speed and watch it tear through the mid game. Now onto one of the most versatile monkeys in the game, the Submarine. Starting with the top path, the Submergent Support Upgrade is the second cheapest non-hero camo detection in the game, and it is incredibly reliable. Then, the Bluntonium Reactor excels in dealing with grouped balloon rushes, making it great for race events and in battles too. This also makes for a nice stepping stone to the Energizer, whose main strength is reducing the cooldowns of all monkeys by 20%. This is insane in free play or boss events where abilities run rampant. Onto the middle path, the Ballistic Missile has a high amount of pierce for how cheap it is, making it excellent for handling very dense clumps of balloons. Then, the first strike ability will destroy or cripple large health targets such as the round 100 bad. I am not exaggerating when I say that if I can't afford it, I get first strike for round 100 every time. And the tier 5 preemptive strike strength is that its ability to deal instant damage to blimps entering the screen, allowing it to pop DDTs right away before round 100. And the bottom path is a fan favorite as it is great early, mid, and late game. The Triple Guns upgrade is an efficient early game DPS tower, especially when paired with advanced intel and buffed by alchemists. Then, Armor Piercing Darts specialize in dealing great damage versus mob class bloons, making it a good choice for rounds 40 and 60. And the Sub Commander is a highly versatile tower whose main strength is buffing every other submarine in its radius, so you can take advantage of all of these guys' strengths. Next up is one of my favorite towers, the Buccaneer. Starting with the Destroyer, its strength is how much damage it outputs for such a cheap price. Plus, it pairs great with Alchemist as it shoots tons of projectiles when cross paths with Grape Shot, making it a beast in the early to mid game. Then, the aircraft carrier does good global damage, but it really makes for a good stepping stone to the carrier flagship, which main strength lies in its global damage and its attack speed bonus to water based towers and monkey aces. Onto the middle path, the cannon ship does great damage to group balloons for a low price, particularly excelling in race events. Then, Monkey Pirates is great for insta-killing mobs or BFBs early, especially in custom challenges, and the Pirate Lord is great for taking out mob class balloons and providing a bit of extra income. And the bottom path Buccaneer is all about making money, with its main strength being able to farm on water. Plus, you can fit a crazy amount of bucks on some maps, making for some serious cash generation. Now onto the ace, whose strength for all paths are its global range and ability to ignore obstacles. But for the top path, the fighter plane does good damage to mobs with its global missiles. Then, Operation Dartstorm becomes a very reliable global damage dealer with its more darts and better missiles. But the Sky Shredder takes this to another level, as it's the strongest global tower for its price. Its crazy number of darts and missiles makes chimps possible even on the hardest maps. Onto the middle path, this guy drops explosions onto the track, which is great for grouped balloons, especially races as it has a ton of pierce. Then, the Ground Zero and Zar Bomba upgrades give the ace the ability to wipe out the entire screen with a push of a button, which can end races quickly and makes rounds 96, 98, and 99 much easier. 
As for the bottom path, Nevermiss gets the most out of every dart, making for some great mid-game damage, especially when paired with an Alchemist. This guy builds greatly into a Spectre, which has super high pierce and damage, which shreds ceramics before round 81. And if you can afford the Flying Fortress, it'll shred just about everything with its insane attack speed, damage, and pierce. Next up is the Heli Pilot, who also has the extra benefit of global range, but its top path really starts with the Apache Dart Ship. This guy is a beast in the mid game, capable of soloing through round 80 on many maps, making it a great stepping stone to the Apache Prime. This tier 5 does amazing damage to every balloon type and really only struggles against DDTs or on multi lane maps. For the middle path, Downdraft Strength is its stalling ability, as it is the most reliable blowback option in the game. Then, the Support Chinook allows you to move your towers around the map, which is especially useful in boss events as you want to move that super brittle around. And the Special Pop Rations gains a very versatile Marine and the Door Gunner ability, which can turn most towers into global monkeys. And for the bottom path, it starts off strong with Mob Shove, which zones Mob Class Bloons for a low price. Then, the Comanche Defense adds quite a bit of defense, allowing you to save up for Comanche Commander, which is strong due to its global range, high number of projectiles, and synergy with Pat and Gwen. Now onto everyone's least favorite tower, the Mortars. All of them have the strength of global range, but for the top path, the tier 3 provides a super cheap stun effect. Then, the big one destroys groups of balloons, especially if targeting a loop that will help it maximize its pierce. It also makes for a good stepping stone to the biggest one, which absolutely destroys super ceramics and does good damage to mob class balloons. For the middle path, Heavy Shells is a good, low-cost option at countering early game ceramics and black balloons. Then, the Artillery Battery is capable of handling some dense packs of balloons and dealing good damage versus mob class balloons, especially when utilizing its ability. And the Poppinot provides good damage, but more importantly, a global stun that freezes all the balloons on screen. This pairs well with Striker Jones as he combats the long ability cooldown and the small blast size of its main attack. Onto the bottom path, Signal Flare is useful for combining damage and decamo for an affordable price. Then, Shattering Shell's biggest strength is that it de-fortifies Mob Class Bloons, which is especially useful for a 98, and Bloon Cineration tears apart Mob Class Bloons, making it so that you only have to deal with the ceramics left inside. And just like the Mortar, the Dartling Gunners have great range, so that is a strength for all of them. But for the top path, the Laser Cannon has decent pierce and damage for its price, which really lets you save up for the Plasma Accelerator, which is crazy strong on straight paths with its 50 pierce and it has decent single target damage if you focus balloons with its endpoint. Then, if you save up for a Ray of Doom, its ridiculously high pierce and good first target damage will destroy just about everything even a ways into free play. Just make sure to use these guys on a straightaway to get the most out of them. For the middle path, Hydra Rocket Pods excels at destroying grouped balloons with its multiple explosions per missile, making it a staple of balloons battles too. Then, the Rocket Storm upgrade provides an ability that does great burst damage that will handle ceramic rushes or fortified mobs, and the Mad Strength is clearly it's insane damage to mob class balloons. Even a single hit can fully eliminate the layers off of mobs and DDTs before round 100. And onto the bottom path, Buckshot changes things up by having a large number of projectiles with a low attack speed, but also gains the ability to knock back balloons. Just like the other paths, this guy should be used on a straightaway to get the most out of it. But the Bloon Aerial Denial System and Bloon Exclusion Zone ramp up this guy's DPS quite a bit, but their strength remains the same. They are great at single target damage and groups of weaker balloons where all of their projectiles will hit something, but large amounts of pierce is not needed. Just pair it with Pat Fusty and an Alchemist and you'll be good to go. Next up are the Magic Monkeys, and we'll start with the Wizard. For the top path, Arcane Mastery is strong due to its low price, good damage, and ability to ignore obstacles. Then, the Arcane Spike excels at dealing high damage to mob class balloons, as well as having decent cleanup potential, and the Archmage is most useful for dealing considerable damage against groups of mob class balloons, and is a good overall source of damage versus DDTs. For the middle path, Wall of Fire is a great early game option, especially in races. Dragon's Breath does great damage to balloons and decent damage to mobs in the mid game. The Summon Phoenix is useful for destroying mob class balloons and dealing cleanup at a global range, and the Wizard Lord Phoenix can be used to inflict massive damage to every balloon on screen, capable of wiping out even round 98. Onto the bottom path, the Shimmer upgrade is a useful decamo option, especially when placed on curves, but the real power of this path starts with the Necromancer, which is an amazing cleanup tower as the zombie balloons move backwards on the track. Then, the Prince of Darkness is one of the best exit defenders in the game as undead mobs and BFBs demolish dense packs of super ceramics and DDTs all for a low price compared to other tier 5s. Next up is the Super Monkey and we'll start with the Sun Avatar. This monkey is one of the best mid game options as it is capable of soloing most rounds through the 70s and pairs great with alchemists and villages. Then the Sun Temple is clearly one of the strongest towers in the game especially when sacrificed fully and it is a necessity in boss events and the true Sun God takes us to another level with its 
DPS only being rivaled by Paragons, though a god buffed VTSG does have a fighting chance for the strongest tower in the game. Then the middle path is an interesting one, really starting with the Robo Monkey, which main strength is dealing high single target damage with its critical hits and high attack speed. Then the Tech Tear upgrade adds the strength by countering hyper dense packs of Bloons and Blimps by using its ability, which is super useful on rounds 96, 98, and 99. And the Anti Bloon takes us to another level with more damage and a wider area of effect on the ability. And the bottom path is the coolest in my opinion as it resembles Batman, but its strengths are the ability to relocate with its Dark Shift ability and high mob class damage, and the Legend of the Night gains a Black Hole ability capable of popping everything except for boss bloons, making it so you lose no lives which can be incredibly useful in free play. Next we have the Ninja, with the most popular path being the top. This really starts with Double Shot as it is an early game monster especially when paired with Seeking Shurikens, and makes for a great stepping stone to Bloon Jitsu, which is the most common way to beat round 40. Just pair this Ninja with an Alchemist and a Hero and it will carry runs on easier maps through rounds 45 or 50. And then we have the Grandmaster Ninja, which is pretty lackluster on its own, but if you buff it with a Village and 20 Shinobi Ninjas, it will destroy the late game with its incredible attack speed and pierce. Onto the middle path, this ninja is one of the most useful support towers in the game, being essential in most chimp runs. To start, the tier 3 Shinobi buffs the attack speed and pierce of nearby ninjas, and we just talked about how effective this threat is with the Grandmaster. Then, the tier 4 Bloon Sabotage slows all balloons on screen by 50% for 15 seconds, making rounds 95 through 99 much easier, especially for how cheap this tower is. And the Grand Saboteur upgrade takes us to another level by making the ability last twice as long and deals 25% damage to all incoming blimps on screen, which is crazy useful for late game and farming pops for the Ninja Paragon. And the third path of the Ninja is the least used, but still incredibly strong. The Flash Bomb provides a semi-reliable stun that can hit camos and leads, then it upgrades to a Sticky Bomb, which provides good mob class damage for a low price, but this really all builds up to the Master Bomber, which deals massive damage to blimps and even stuns them. Alone it is decent, but if you surround it with Shinobis, it'll destroy the late game just like the Grand Master. Next, we have arguably the best path in the game, which is the Top Path Alchemist. This thing starts off with Berserker Brew, which is one of the most cost-effective buffs in the game as it improves the attack speed, pierce, and damage of the affected towers. Then, Stronger Stimulant makes these buffs even better and last longer and is bought in just about every game as it can over double the damage of other towers for a cheap price. Just make sure to pair it with towers that have many projectiles like the Tack Shooter or Bloonjutsu Ninja and you're in for an easy run. And the cream of the crop is Perma Brew, which makes Acidic Mixture Dip and Strong Stronger stimulant buffs permanent, which is incredibly useful if you have tons of monkeys to buff or a few tier 5s that shoot way too fast. Onto the middle path, Unstable Concoction is a great supporting tower on blimp heavy rounds like 98. Its explosive coating can make clearing these rounds much easier for a low price. Then, it upgrades into Transforming Tonic, which can output some good damage when its ability is activated, but more importantly, it makes clearing rounds 63 and 78 much easier so you can save up for total transformation. This tier 5 excels at just about everything when its ability is active, so just pair it with some Druids of Wrath and a good Stalling Strat and you are in for an easy run. And for the bottom path, Lead to Gold and Rubber to Gold can make some decent income, especially for how cheap they are. Though not as reliable as Monkey Town, they are much less expensive. And these guys upgrade into the Bloon Master Alchemist, whose strength is clearly in taking out Mob Quest Balloons, as he brings them down to Red Balloons with his Magical Shrinking Potion. Next up is the Druid, and the top path is excellent at stalling balloons. Starting with the Druid of the Storm, his tornado is especially useful for blowing back ceramics. Then the Ball Lightning adds quite a bit of damage, plus the extra benefit of being able to freeze balloons for even more stalling potential. And finally, Superstorm takes us to another level, as its Super Tornado can blow back anything other than bads and bosses, and is even capable of perma-stalling ZOMGs. Onto the middle path, the Druid of the Jungle has excellent early and mid-game popping power, especially on single lane maps. This has become an incredibly popular choice ever since the Thorn buff back in Update 28.0, as it is a super cheap monkey with global range and lead popping power. This upgrades into the Jungle's Bounty, whose strength is the ability to farm while also bolstering your defenses with its double vine attack. And the tier 5 is the Spirit of the Forest, whose main calling cards are its infinite pierce, global range, and its ability is a great way to get extra lives. And for the bottom path, the Druid of Wrath is a good cheap option for defense, especially when paired with Obin, but its upgrade is where the real fun starts. Poplus Druid's strength comes when you group 6 of them together, as they can handle large rushes on their own, or buff other Druids like Superstorm, or the next upgrade, the Avatar of Wrath, which excels against rounds with tons of bloons and blimps, as it does more damage the more RBE is on screen. Moving on to farms, I'm going to combine all of these guys as they are all used to make absurd amounts of money. The top path is used for generating the most amount of money as well as being the best sacrifices to monkeyopolises. That is why you see them so much in boss events where money is king. Then we have the middle path which provides great returns on a much smaller investment. 
Banks and IMF loans are great for unpoppable runs because they are affordable, and Monkey Nomics is pretty good if you have a stall strat and you can use its ability twice around. And the bottom path is best used for boat farming. Combining this path with a bunch of favorite trades makes for one heck of an end of round bonus. Onto the factory, the top path Spike Balls is a powerful mid game upgrade that excels at taking out ceramic and fortified balloons. Then, Spike Mines can handle most rushes before Super Ceramics start coming, and its explosions demolish dense packs of balloons. And the Tier 5 Super Mines inflicts massive damage to everything and is even capable of soloing through round 100. The middle path's Mob Shredder excels at Mob damage, but to get the most out of this guy, make sure not to waste his spikes on weaker balloons. Then, the Spike Storm is great at clearing the screen of Mob class balloons and is very useful for the round 100 bad, and the Carpet of Spikes is specifically designed for tons of damage all over the track. This guy excels against the blimp heavy rounds of the 90s and is especially good on shorter maps or those with multiple tracks. And the bottom path of this factory is all about increasing the spike pile's lifespan. All of these play the same role in creating a huge wall of death that destroy any balloons that made it through your main defenses. It is strong against every type of balloon, just try not to waste the spikes on weaker balloons and stall every round with an ice monkey so it can refill its spike pile. Next is the Top Path Village. Starting with the primary training, this thing is great when paired with primary monkeys, most notably tack shooters, because it boosts their low pierce. Then, upgrading it to a primary mentoring gives your primary monkeys more range, shorter cooldowns, and free tier 1 upgrades, which pairs great with bomb shooters as their upgrades are expensive and some great strategies revolve around spamming tons of them. And the tier 5 primary expertise further improves the buffs for nearby primary monkeys, now granting them an extra 3 pierce, even faster cooldowns, and free tier 1 and 2 upgrades, making the bomb shooter spam even better. Onto the middle path, it is all about utility. It starts off strong with camo detection and the ability for every affected monkey to be able to pop any type of balloon, which is very useful, especially once DDTs start coming. Then we get to the Call of Arms and Homeland Defense, which are great for free play and boss events as they increase the attack speed and pierce of many monkeys at once. And the bottom path village is all about saving and making money. Monkey Town Strength is its ability to increase the value of each pop, which is especially deadly when combined with balloon traps or rubber to gold. Then the Monkey City buffs the income of all tower in its range, being an absolute must for farms or any other sort of alternate eco like snipers or druids. And this brings us to the farming monster in the Monkeyopolis. This thing's clear strength is being able to produce the most money per round than any other tower in the game. On to the final tower, the engineer's top path focuses on sentries. Starting with sprockets, it increases the attack speed of the sentries by 66%, which really helps out in the early game. Then, Sentry Expert brings a bunch of utility to these sentries. The cold sentries stall super ceramics, the energy sentries deal good damage to mobs, the crushing sentries work similar to spike pult in that they will bounce off obstacles, and the boom sentries excel against large clumps of balloons, just like bomb shooters. And the Sentry Champion takes this to another level by upgrading all of the sentries to shoot plasma attacks ridiculously fast making it a well-rounded tower that excels on maps like Dark Castle, where the sentries will always be placed right next to the track where they fully utilize their explosions. Next, we have the middle path, which is an amazing support. Cleansing foam strips leads, camos, and regen properties, as well as providing slows if cross path is a 032. This is normally used as a stepping stone to overclock, but it is a nice form of lead popping power. For overclock, it is one of the best supporting towers in the game. This thing excels when buffing strong tier 5 towers like the Sky Shredder, Tax Zone, or Banana Farms. And the tier 5 is Ultra Boost, which adds a permanent attack speed buff. Though it is normally only used in super late game runs, it adds a ton of damage to your towers. And for the bottom path, the Double Gun Engineer is a beast in the early game with its good attack speed, pierce, and pin effect. When placed on a straight line, this thing can solo for quite some time. Then, it upgrades to a Bloon Trap, which is great for extra income generation, especially when paired with Rubber to Gold or a Monkey City. I like to use this one on boss events starting around 34, as the extra money plus extra defense is a great combo. And finally, we have the XXXL Trap, which is obviously super strong against mob class balloons, as it can even one-shot fortified ZOMGs. Now, knowing all this is great, but to get the most out of your monkeys, you also need to know their weaknesses. Luckily, this video right here covers just that.